Welcome to J-Heart Model Works. It's time to take a look at what's next on the bench, and this time it's the Dino 246 GTS Enthusiast Series from Fujimi. Welcome to my workbench. Let's get started. All right, guys, with the Chevelle completed, it is time to start on our next project, and it's going to be the Dino 246 GTS, the Enthusiast Series by Fujimi. Now, there's two sets of, there's a hard top in the, the convertible, but there's also, there's the Enthusiast Series models, and there's a Standard Series models for, the, for these cars. The Enthusiast Series models has a full engine, uh, the trunk with the spare tire and all the like all the bells and whistles are in this kit the standard version does not have an engine at all it's got a full under tray with some kind of like the bottom typical of what you see from a curbside Japanese kit this however is not that kit this is the one that has everything in it this is also the original 1987 boxing first release for this kit. This kit is almost as old as I am. So here are instructions. This kit is so old the instructions are even yellow. We have our body. You can see even the plastic is starting to take on a slightly yellowish tone to it. All in all the body is really clean. It looks to be in good condition. I don't see any major sinks. There are obviously going to be some mold lines we'll have to take care of. It's a kit from 1987 and it's been passed around from person to person. Wheels and tires. Very nice wheels and tires. You also get a spare to go into the front. Go over our chrome tree is not bad but it's probably all going to get stripped body panels our clear sprue and the decals go into that in more detail makes no sense why they package this like this there's two sprues and one back here and then more sprues in individual bags. Nice box art if you're into that sort of thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all this unbagged and we'll take a closer look. All right, let's go ahead and start with the instructions. These are typical fold-out instructions. And they're not the clearest instructions on the planet. So I said I'd do a slideshow on these, so here we go. All right, we have the wheel and tire sprue, of which only one wheel and tire actually remains on the sprue. We also have one of our center caps which has been knocked out. This is a different center cap as this is the one that goes in the front. We do have branded Dunlop tires. It's not really, I mean it's kind of like a satin chrome I guess. It's a pretty nice finish. Um, that being said, it's probably going to get stripped and I'll probably do like some super silver or something on these. Also in the wheel and tire are these four ridiculously small screws, which I will hopefully not lose. We have our body, nice and clean. There are definitely some mold seams in here we'll have to take care of. It has been broken over time, multiple owners, probably been bought and sold a few times. When I got it, it was broken, so I added some Tamiya Extra Thin in there. We'll probably end up covering all that up with uh, 
or metal foil anyhow, so we will see what happens. We have our chrome sprue. Not terrible. I'm probably going to do Alclad on this. There's some sink marks. And those headlight bezels. I guess those are headlight bezels. I don't even know what these are. There's definitely a sink mark in them. These are the mirrors. Not sure what these parts are, but they've got some definite sink marks in them. Those parts right there, tiny little parts right there, are the door latches. That is ridiculous. But on the real car, they're going to sit right there. These are the caps that go on the end of the rear bumpers. Not bad. I'm going to strip it and do alclad on it. The rest of our body panels. There are a lot of sink marks in here that will have to be addressed. Underside of the engine cover. We have the chassis. Floor pan. Looks like some suspension components. Everything looks pretty good. There's only tiny bits of flash here and there. Some more suspension. The front area. That's going to be your top. Which that looks like that's got some definite sinks to it. It's a good thing I'm probably never going to use it. Seats are nicely detailed, although technically that should sink in instead of raising up. Door cards are nicely detailed, although that opening back there is not like uber cool maybe you won't really see it when it's in the car but that should be solid back there dashboard looks nice two-part dash wipers so i'm not sure why there's two of this wiper and one of this wiper i don't think it's got a rear wiper on it Lots of engine components. The exhaust pipes are all individual. That's going to be interesting. We do have a couple of pieces that got broke off over time, well, but they are here. We've got them. The other one's over here. Looks like the exhaust parts of the engine. Instead of giving you like a whole block, they make you, it looks like they're making you build the block up from tiny parts. This is, they go into a lot of detail on the enthusiast kits. I mean, there's a lot. There's your six point distributor with your little nubs. Oil filter, maybe? Mm, there's a lot of stuff in here.
Then I went up one more screw. Steering column, wheel hubs, front and rear sway bars, rear axle, front linkage, there's the air cleaner box, fuel cells, the suspension. Let's take a look at the suspension. Oh, that's really clean. No sink marks at all. That's really nice. Here's our brakes. Mm, could be better, could be worse. Very clean. There's no flash. There really isn't. I don't see any flash at all on here. For a 1980s kit, this is really nicely molded. We don't take this out of the bag until we're ready to use it. There's a stand for the engine. If you want to display the engine separately. I think there's also a stand with a nameplate for the car. Your rear glass. There's not too much distortion to it. Front windshield. All in all, it's pretty nice. I will most likely want to actually cut these side windows off to have the windows down, but that's just me. There are some scratches in. Scratches or dust? Nope, those are scratches. We may look at trying to polish those out, but it's a 1980s kit. It's been sliding around in the box. And again, for, 19, for a 1980s kit, this is really nice quality. These, however, are a letdown. There's no way these are going to be useful. Even sticking these in the, the window for a while and trying to bleach them in the sun is not really going to work. I'm going to end up, and you know, you can't source these anywhere, to be honest. So what I'm going to end up doing is scanning these in on the computer, and I'm going to remake a lot of these. I can't remake the silver, so that Dino GT logo, the Pininfarina, the Ferrari logos, those are gone. I am going to be able to remake these, and I'll be honest, I've actually started on this already. Um, so I've actually got these remade. Uh, the Dino uh, for the steering wheel, I actually got rid of, just like with these, I got rid of the yellow. I'll just paint it, and uh, I'll just print the Dino on clear. Some of this is just too small to read anyhow. So as long as you get the general you know, shape, it should be good. And some of it we're not even going to really use. Uh, I've already gone and remade that logo. But yeah, I mean, all in all, it's stuff that we can remake with do-it-yourself decals. It's just going to be a matter of how well the quality will be on the scans as to how well they're going to turn out when we go to use them i did mention that a couple of those uh the dina logos aren't going to be usable the silver stuff i was able to find online from this replicas and miniatures the dino gt and photo etch as well as some pin and farina badging and the original car only has one on the passenger side it's going to go right back here so we've got that taken care of and the Ferrari logos, the original Dinos do not ship with Ferrari's logos on them. Some of the later cars I think may, 
The Dino brand cars were designed to be cheaper, more entry-level cars than Ferrari's V12s to compete with the 911. They're completely Ferrari cars built in Ferrari's factory with Ferrari parts. But Enzo, being Enzo, felt a cheaper V6 car would diminish Ferrari, which only made V12s at the time. So he didn't want Ferrari's name on the car. Dino was chosen in honor of Enzo's son, who had passed from muscular dystrophy and had engineered the V6 that Ferrari was using in a series of Formula 2 race cars and would be used in the Dino road cars. But some of the dealerships, especially in America, added the Pony and the Ferrari scroll to call up the Ferrari lineage and improve sales. So you will see some cars that will have Cavallino Pony right here, and then they'll have the Ferrari across the back. I may or may not do that. If so, I've got some aftermarket uh, metal transfers that'll do the job nicely. Um, let me know, what do you think? Do you think I should do the Ferrari script in the, uh, the Prancing Horse, or should I leave it off? All right, so that's gonna be it for the unboxing. As far as plans for the video series, I just finished a full build series on the Chevelle, and build series are a lot of work for me. I honestly spend more time editing videos on a full build series than I do actually building. And I have to work in themed sections. Well, I mean, I don't, I guess I don't have to, but I tend to when I'm filming. I'll do like a video focused entirely on the engine and another one entirely on the interior or on the body. Um, it just makes more sense to me to film that way when I'm doing video builds. But you know, if I'm just doing weekly updates where I just work and show you what I've got done at the end of the week, then I've got more flexibility. I can work more randomly. You know, I can start on the body and you know, while something's drying, I can maybe work on the wheels or you know, just have a little more flexibility and a lot less editing. I don't know. Uh, the other thought on that is these enthusiast series kits from Fujimi are incredibly detailed. So I'm not really likely to be adding much to it. You know, with the Chevelle, I did a lot of aftermarket parts. I did, you know, the scratch building the battery, things like that. But aside from adding maybe some plug wires and a hose or two to the engine bay, there's not really much detailing I'm going to be able to do that's not really already baked into the kit. Um, I believe there's something like over 200 parts in this kit already. Uh, I know the Porsche that I did, the Porsche 356 that I did with Sean on our buddy build, that thing had like a jack and a pouch for tools in it. So like I said, there's already a ton in here. There's not going to be much I'm going to be doing extra. Um, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Full video builds or just weekly project updates. For now though, I'm going to wrap this video up and call it a night so I can get started on prepping the body. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Also, feel free to leave comments, feedback, critique, or anything else in the comment section below. I enjoy interacting with all my viewers in the comment section and try to reply to all the comments I receive. If you want to catch future videos, please consider subscribing to my channel and make sure you click the bell notification icon so you can be notified when I upload new videos. As always, thank you for watching, keep modeling, and have a great day.